Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren Malhoyt with Men and Mice. I'm the head of growth and product marketing for Men and Mice. Um, I wanted to, we're going to dive into the product, but I kind of wanted to start with our company vision, especially if this is kind of your first introduction or if you ha haven't, you know, really dove into Men and Mice yet. Um, our company vision is very short, but very meaningful. Make it simple and easy to manage DNS, DHCP, and IPAM, or DDI, as we lovingly call it. Um, things can be simple and not easy, and vice versa. Versa, uh, But we are trying our best to help our, cos our customers achieve both. So just a little bit about who we are. We uh, were founded about 30 years ago in Iceland. Our headquarters is still in Reykjavik. I'm working on my Icelandic pronunciation. Um, and we have employees, we have people around the world in multiple countries, but certainly several teams across the US as well. Our customer base is also global. We have large enterprises from the Fortune 100 um, all the way down through mid-market and even SMB. Um, we scale very well, especially in kind of more modern architectures, multi-cloud, multi-site, all of the multis, multi-services, right? Um, we'll talk more about how we scale and all of that in just a bit. Um, but I also wanted to talk, I'm not going to read through this whole slide, don't worry, but I wanted to kind of touch on a few things, which is that we truly are experts in network management. The reason I point that out, and you know, we'll get into the, the overlay architecture of, of Maestro, our product later, um, but because we are designed for modern, modern architectures with our overlay design, um, our product teams, our developers, our support people actually have to understand the underlying services. We have to understand AWS Route 53, the DNS service. We have to know Azure DNS. We have to know Microsoft, Bind, Kia, all of the underlying services that you might connect with um, in order to run you know, the best DDI environment for your use cases. So you know, obviously, that requires a lot of knowledge, a lot of expertise to help our customers set things up for you know, best practices and, and to really make things run in a performant way. Um, we go beyond the product, right? We don't just offer support on Maestro itself. The last thing I'll touch on is that we truly have a customer first mentality uh, and I can prove it, right? So because of this overlay architecture that we have, it's actually fairly simple to uninstall Maestro and have everything keep running and just as it was. You can make changes directly to the underlying native services. All of that will keep running. Um, we just believe that our customers will love using Maestro so much that they will continue to use it and not uninstall it. We're not just trying to lock people in. And we believe that our over 95% customer retention rate proves that. So kind of getting into the product a little bit more. Um, like I said, we're gonna be talking about Maestro. Get it, Maestro, like an orchestration system. Um, so Maestro is a non-authoritative and non-disruptive DDI, DNS, DHCP, and IPAM solution. So it gives you one UI or one API, depending on you know, what you're trying to do, um, to create and maintain processes and workflows. Um, and again, this is no matter where your workloads reside, whether they're in the cloud, whether they're on premises, whether you're using some sort of managed DNS service, whatever you're doing, it's one place to go. Even if you want to change those underlying services at some point, right? Maybe you're moving from AWS to Azure. Maybe you're moving from on-prem to Azure. Um, or maybe you're moving back again, right, to put everything on premises. Um, we can help you with all of that and maintain, you'll, you'll have those same exact workflows, right? Because the workflows are going through Maestro, making the underlying services quite fungible. Maestro was designed with modern architectures in mind. What I mean by that is that we're not relying on resource hungry appliances to achieve scale, to achieve the ability to you know, be in the cloud, to be on premises, to be multi-site. Right, we we will give you appliances if you if you want to use appliances, but we do not require them in any way, and this helps our customers avoid the the financial burden right of of unnecessary resource costs. It also helps our customers avoid administrative costs that comes with you know kind of the more closed system proprietary solutions that uh, we see a lot in our space. So let's talk a little bit about why these kinds of legacy or legacy solutions don't really work anymore. Um, here we are, 10 years later, still talking about digital transformation. 
Um, and it's a real thing, right? It's happening. Uh, we, we have given it different buzzwords now, right? We're talking about multi-cloud, super cloud, SASE, SSE, the future of connectivity, the future of retail, the future of industry, whatever you want to call it, right? All of these terms are just different terms for digital transformation. And customers are, are really doing it, right? People are in the middle of this moving to multi-cloud. We saw a report from Flexera last year. It says 89% of customers um, of people, companies, are moving to multi-cloud. We can get into a debate later about what multi-cloud actually means, but suffice it to say, network complexity is growing. Um, sprinkle in a little bit of hybrid work, you know, your distributed workforce and how we're going to handle, you know, all of that. And then, you know, just as a consumer, we're seeing this, right? You walk into any retail store and, you know, you have your, your phone out and you get dinged with a, a coupon because you're in the cereal aisle. You just pass the Lucky Charms and the Lucky Charms have a coupon. You know, that's not coincidence. We know that, right? We are in the warehouses and we know where widgets are because of indoor location services. We are utility companies that are putting smart devices, IoT devices on legacy equipment as kind of a stopgap measurement so that we can modernize things right now. But all of these things have to be tracked. All of these things have to be managed. Everything has a DNS name. Everything has an IP address. Um, and all of these examples are ways that we are talking about the IT teams going beyond IT provider, right? That's, that's yesterday, being an IT provider. We're talking about how IT teams are directly generating revenue for businesses, right? With the same amount of resources that they've always had, sometimes less. Um, but they are expected to meet these business drivers, these new streams of revenue, um, you know, in using kind of the, the same things they've always had. So what does this mean for IT teams? And I'm guessing, you know, all of you have heard the term technical debt. Um, does anyone want to take a stab at defining it for me? Yeah. I love what has not been done, but the boss wants you to do. <laughs> yeah, okay, I like that one, I like that. Anyone else, anyone else want to take a stab? Uh, what the previous administration did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good one, that's a good one too. What will never be fixed. What will never be fixed, ooh, that is, that's really dark. Yeah. That's getting dark. Yeah. Yeah. Any any others? I think that would be technical bankruptcy. <laughs> technical debt to, yeah. What is it, section eleven or yeah. I'm losing the the yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah, what, what that loss between design and uh release schedules. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, your maintenance windows. Yeah, it's essentially getting stuck with like the solution that you chose yesterday, not knowing what today was going to bring, right? Or, or that someone else chose for you yesterday, right? Maybe in a lot of cases. Um, I think, you know, IT teams do their best, right? There's a lot of due diligence that goes into picking solutions, right? They pick solutions based on the services that they're providing to their customers or that they want to provide to their customers. They pick it based on aligning with, you know, the internal services that they want to offer to their coworkers and employees. And then, of course, budget, you know, budget constraints come in. Um, so they have to do everything at a cost they can afford while trying to accurately predict the future. Um, and, you know, that, that is not sustainable, right? We, we can't keep moving forward because new capabilities, new solutions are always going to come out, right? Oceans get red. Like, there's literally books about this. Right? The oceans get red, competitors come out, new solutions, costs, and capabilities come out that maybe now we can move to the hexagonal wheel instead of the square wheel, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And things are a lot simplified. They're easier, right? Because again, we have the same resources. Um, and then eventually the, the circular wheels come out, right? And again, we can make things a lot simpler when we are making decisions that uh, aren't going to age us or aren't going to accrue this kind of technical debt. I believe that we're still kind of in a hardware mentality, right? That we think migration is risky and painful because of this, this hardware mentality. Now I know we're moving to public cloud, we're moving away from this kind of thinking, but we, we believe that we have to forklift upgrade. We believe that we have to rip and replace in order to, you know, make changes. And we have to make this not the case anymore. We have to figure out a way to make change, to make migration more sustainable. And I, 
you know, as we kind of get stuck in this rip and replace mentality, in kind of just the analysis paralysis of moving forward, you know, our IT teams have no time to get trained on new services. Um, they're constantly at a loss, right? They're constantly working from behind. So how do we go ahead and fix this, this endless cycle of technical debt, of rip and replace? And I believe the answer here is abstraction. It's an overlay architecture. Now, Men and Mice is not the first to figure out abstraction or the first to talk about overlay architectures, but what we are doing is bringing it to the DDI environment. We're bringing it to the DDI market, right? And we're doing that with a product called Maestro. Now, Maestro, um, I, this is a very simplified view of what Maestro looks like, the architecture of Maestro, and we're gonna dig deeper into the technology, but Essentially, right, through Maestro Central, kind of the brains of the operation, the app itself, um, we're able to serve out, you know, a web UI or an API to our admins, to our engineers, to our architects, um, and then there's a back-end database. Now, if you're just going to download the free trial, which I hope you all do, um, it comes embedded with like a PostgreSQL database that you don't even have to worry about. But, you know, if you're going to put it in a large production environment, will be very flexible with the, the databases that you want to work with, right? You already have database experts and admins kind of running a Microsoft SQL farm, then great, use that, get all your HA, that's fantastic. Um, we'll be quite flexible with what we support. Um, then kind of the non-disruptive part, right? The, the both the non-disruptive, non-authoritative part, we connect to the DNS, DHCP services, right? This is the overlay. Um, and so, Maestro itself is never authoritative for your DNS zone, right? Um, this gives us, and you'll see in just a bit, what, what this means as far as use cases and what you're able to do. But also it talks about that non-disruptive point that I made earlier about, hey, you, you can actually uninstall Maestro because you're only connecting to the services. You're not requiring that the endpoint devices be retargeted, right? Re, re the destination does not have to be Maestro. In fact, we'll just connect to the services and immediately you're going to see your entire DDI environment, no matter where, what, when it is, right? Um, and so that is kind of the beauty of the overlay, the beauty of being non-disruptive. As I understand it, this overlay can especially help like mid-sized businesses where, for instance, you don't have perhaps an admin who's a specialist, let's say in DNS, maybe they understand IPAM, and so you want to be able to run this efficiently and not hire three people. So that's one aspect. And I guess the other aspect would be if, if you have a very large organization and you're trying to do the perpetual do more with less, this is what's going to help. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it, right? And we have multiple customers that are even onboarding new people that maybe they're a Linux shop and they're not familiar with Linux, right? <laughs> um, and so Maestro kind of takes away that uh, requirement that they have to understand how to do the CLI for, you know, the Ubuntu distro or whatever it is, right? Um, and vice versa, right? P the, the Microsoft MMC hasn't changed much since, what, Windows 2000, Windows NT? Um, and it can be, you know, it, it works, right? But it, it's not the easiest to navigate. It's not the easiest to go through each server, right? So kind of from that perspective, too. And then, of course, you're talking about teams with different skill sets. So we bring in cloud teams, right? And then you have your on-prem network teams in, in larger organizations. Um, now everyone's kind of got the same view, the same visibility, um, and you don't necessarily have to have these very specialized skill sets in order to manage multiple services. So oh, I question, uh, how does the um, Maestro application actually get its IP address, its name services, and its authentication done? Yeah, so Sigfus is actually going to jump right into that. Um, and we'll, this is going to be heavy demo, right? So you guys are going to see it all in action. But essentially, right, just to kind of quickly answer your question, um, we'll pull in multiple ways your IP information, whether that's through some sort of CSV import or something like that, or do a discovery, or just manually adding you know, IP ranges, DHCP scopes, all of that. We can do the same for DHCP. We use agents to connect to services, uh, on-prem services, and then we have um, certain ways that we connect through cloud to cl cloud providers using the APIs. Um, so that's kind of the short answer, but Sigfus will, will dive in and actually okay. show it. 
Is my is Maestro Central something that uh, you host, or we have to find a host for, or what? Yeah, so we host it, and it you can actually install it either on Windows or on Linux or through the Azure Marketplace. Um, again, very flexible. We want to kind of meet you all where you are, rather than you having to come to us uh, and and kind of design your environment around our product. Um, but yeah, it, um, it can be obviously installed in the public cloud or on prem wherever you like. And, and is your is it your your server farm, or are you going through AWS for uh, Maestro, or what? So it, it is all uh, contained on-prem or in the public cloud. Your VPCs, though, like your, you are maintaining the server for Maestro Central. Okay. How does your product differentiate from the other products that operate or offer very similar solutions? Sure, sure. Yeah, and we will dive more into that. But I think the simple answer is that we bring overlay to DDI. Um, so kind of, you know, typically in our area, people are reliant on appliances, whether those be virtual or hardware appliances, they're reliant on appliances. Uh, if not to run the entirety of their DDI environment, they rely on appliances to scale their environment, which we do not. Um, and so I think that is the major differentiator. We, we allow you to use the services that best suit your use case as opposed to, again, kind of requiring these resource intensive um, appliances. And I have done the math. I'm not going to say the name of the, the competitor, um, but you know it can be significant, thousands and thousands of dollars if you want to do DDI in the cloud the same way you do on-prem and to support that cost before we even talk about licensing. I'm just talking about cloud resource costs. No. Guys manage the underlying services as well for like patching bind or do you just create the records? So it depends on, so we do offer an appliance if you want to use it, right? And then in that case, we would support the, the patching. Um, but otherwise, we would have the, the admins do the patching for the underlying services. Um, but of course, we do kind of um, do any sort of patching that needs to happen for Maestro itself. Okay. 